Hey guys, welcome back to my channel for part two of our push-pull legs workout series. Uh, today we're going to be breaking down the optimal pull workout for our push-pull leg split. A pull workout is going to focus primarily on the lats, the traps, the rear delts, and the biceps. For the purposes of this video, I won't be covering the warm-up section, but always make sure to warm up with some light cardio and dynamic stretches before jumping into a workout. Just to quickly cover what each muscle does, the lats are going to be mainly responsible for adduction of the arm, extension of the arm, and horizontal abduction of the arms. The traps assist with scapular elevation, scapular depression, and scapular retraction, depending on which muscle fibers of the traps are being activated. The rear delt's main motion are horizontal abduction and extension of the arm, and the biceps brachii's main functions are flexion of the elbow, supination of the arm, and slight flexion of the shoulder. So starting off, we've got the pronated wide grip lat pulldowns. The pronated and wide hand position will help us to better isolate the lats through adduction at the shoulder with small amounts of assistance coming from the biceps and the brachialis muscles. Focusing on driving through the elbows will help to better establish a mind-muscle connection with your lats. You also want to make sure that your body is in a fairly upright position and doesn't lean back during the concentric to assist with the lift. A tiny amount of movement can be okay, but the goal of the lift is to keep it as a vertical pull. And it's also fairly common to see lat pulldowns performed behind the head, but this motion places an unnecessary risk on the shoulder joints and the neck with no clear benefit. So keeping the pull in front of the neck is advised to help prevent injury. Use of a wide grip of V-bar can also be a good variation of this exercise. Next up, we have the chest supported T-bar row. When designing a pull workout, you always want to make sure to hit at least one vertical pull and at least one horizontal pull. Moving from a vertical pull to a horizontal pull will not only hit the lats in a different way, but by pulling with our arms at a 30 to 45 degree angle, our rear delts, traps, and rhomboids will better assist with the lift as the shoulder blades squeeze back during the movement. There are variations of other horizontal rows, such as the seated row or the bent over row, but I find that support of the chest allows the working muscles to handle more weight since the lower back isn't being heavily relied on as a stabilizer. Now moving into some direct bicep specific work, standing easy bar curls are up next. Easy bar curls target the biceps, the brachialis, and the brachioradialis muscles through elbow flexion with the forearm in a partially supine position. Easy bar variations of standing curls have been shown to better activate the biceps and the brachioradialis muscle than traditional dumbbell variations. While straight bar curls also showed similar activation of these muscles to easy bar curls, the grip of an easy bar tends to be more natural and helps to avoid some forearm related injuries that can come from consistently doing straight bar curls. Hitting an upward vertical pull for the next exercise, shrugs is the best way to target the upper fibers of the trapezius. Since this is the only exercise that directly targets the upper fibers of the traps, we'll be doing a fourth set of this exercise. These can be done using dumbbells, barbells, or machines, but I personally prefer to use a machine variation because it locks in my form and helps me to better establish a mind-muscle connection with my traps. A common error with the shrug exercise is to pull with your shoulders falling forward. Like most lifts, keep your chest up and your shoulders back throughout the movement and use a full range of motion. It's common to see this lift be loaded too heavily and the shoulders not travel as high up as they should to best activate the muscle. Hitting the biceps again, the seated incline dumbbell curl will put the bicep in a stretched position, helping to get better activation of what's known as the biceps peak. This study on the effects of different shoulder positions on the biceps brachii activation examined three different shoulder positions of curls, those being the seated dumbbell inclined curl, the standing dumbbell curl, and preacher dumbbell curls. The study found that the standing and seated inclined variations elicited the most activation of the biceps throughout the entire range of motion. For the seated inclined variation, the arms are extended a bit behind the body. From there, you're going to curl the weight up with your palms in that supine position throughout the entire range of motion. Keep your head back and control the weight, 
on the way back down. The final exercise of this pull workout, the cable reverse fly, is going to target the rear delts through horizontal abduction at the shoulders. We're also going to get assistance from the mid traps and the rhomboid muscles of the upper back through scapular retraction. Dumbbell variations of this exercise are common as well, but the cable machine variation will leave tension on the muscle through the entire range of motion, making it a better exercise in my opinion. You aren't trying to pull your elbows past their natural range of motion, you're just pulling from in front of the body to out at the sides. I like to pull from a high position to a slightly lower position as well, as having my elbows down a bit does allow a slightly larger range of motion. That's going to do it for the perfect pull workout. Go check out part one of the series, which is the push workout part, and then keep an eye out for part three, which will be coming soon. But anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, give my video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you soon.